Hello, hello. Welcome back to the Story Darlings podcast. I'm Sandra. I'm Tara. And I'm Jess. Jesse, <laughs> thank you so much for joining us today. Welcome of back. Course. I'm so excited to be here. Yes. Tara, what are we talking about today? Well, I was going to let Jesse tell because it's her favorite. So it is my favorite. You. I love this idea. <laughs> tell what we're talking about today, Jesse. We are talking about part two of A Court of Silver Flames. <laughs> Yay. I have both of my copies here. I have and... a different copy, but it's all the way over there. And so like, I'd have to get up to go run and grab it. I have this book in every format. I have the paperback, special edition Barnes & Noble. I have the hardback. I've got the ebook, and I've got the audio book. So I'm covered. <laughs> have you listened to any of the graphic audio on this I series? Haven't. I am like torn because I have a hard time with the audio book in general. Like I think they did a pretty good job with it, but the voices aren't the way the voices are in my head. And so oh, yeah. it's hard for me to like listen, but I'm I'm thinking about it. I have to get through Wheel of Time on audiobook first. Oh my God. But Man, book hats off. <laughs> book five of the 14 <laughs> book series. So, yes. I think that's the last one I finished off on, and I've been on like a two year hiatus for Wheel of Time. <laughs> They're yeah. just so damn dense. Yeah, they are. There's a lot. But my husband is reading A Court of Silver Flames, actually. In exchange Good for me husband. reading Wheel of Times. Well, he's he read all of A Court of Thorns and Roses and he's oh, on Silver that. Flames. So that's amazing. Yeah. Okay, well, um, so part one of Silver Flames, Tara and I had a little hiccup when we recorded the last episode because we were supposed to talk about chapters through 37. I read the chapter, Tara did not. And so I can't I read, ca- apparently. <laughs> so. <laughs> so we I guess we can pretty much pick up from the bog of orid right because it was Mm. pretty much right after that part so this part chapter 37 is a very smutty scene it's just kind of a a very sexy way to pick up on this episode but cassian and nesta they do it and all i had was like a peach emoji (laughs) 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 to represent this part like that was my note (laughs) so I just wrote um, sex, but there's so much <laughs> sex in this book that I'm yeah. not really sure which scene it was. Yes. Yeah. Uh, I want to throw like, in the which, disclaimer. Which sex? Like, which part? <laughs> I want to throw in the disclaimer that that's not the reason this is my favorite book. Uh, yes. Uh, sure. My my hot take, honestly, is that I wish that she would have either at least densed down the smut or that she had, like, taken it out completely for this book because it almost overshadows the parts that I really, really love about the book, you know, and a lot of people are like, they sacrifice plot for the steam. And I'm like, I don't agree with you, but we'll never know. <laughs> uh, yeah, the plot was amazing. I I don't know. I, I enjoyed the smutty scenes. It was a lot. I The first time I read it, I was like, oh, there's no way there's going to be that much sex again in the second half of the book. And there was somehow <laughs> more and more yeah. explicit. Well, I was like, well, I don't have actually... to imagine a single thing. Yeah. You actually got to the actual sex. The first yeah. half, you were just doing other sex things. It's all foreplay. <laughs> yes. Fantasizing and yeah. Mm-hmm. So we don't even have to talk about that part. But um, I mean, so they basically do it for the first time. And then it goes over to their training with Gwen and Emery and Nesta. And it's hilarious because they can sense everything that's been going on and just Word, right Teasing girl her. best friends always know <laughs> and there yeah, were so awful. many innuendos thrown around <laughs> it, like I was laughing so much I'm like yeah that sounds like what me and Sandra would do to each other <laughs> yeah uh-huh. definitely but training is going well there are up to 11 females now that are doing the training so they're having themselves a little crew going a little bad bitch crew mm-hmm. and I think it's Gwen teaches Nesta about the mind stilling, right? This is like a form of meditation, which Nesta definitely needs. Mm -hmm. And then after this, they go to the blacksmith and Cassian takes Nesta there and she gets to take out some energy pounding away on these weapons and she works on three of them. Terry, you want to talk a little bit about them? Yeah, so she has two swords and a little dagger and um i found it hilarious that later on in the book the the blacksmith is like these are cursed and like throws them at reese (laughs) 
this? And he's like, what the hell? What the hell? And, he's, and then he calls like Cassian and Nesta up there. And he's like, why did the blacksmith just throw these at me? I, I loved how Aaron was like, don't unsheathe them. Don't open the swords at all. And like later she's like, I knew you guys wouldn't be able to resist, you dummies. <laughs> So that's the first thing that Reese wants to do. And like Cassian, like, is let's see why she thinks that these are so dangerous. But basically, Nesta had made magical weapons, which had not been around for a very, very, very long time. So we see a little bit more into Nesta's powers. So much power. And like uh-huh. the punching bag, like what she did to that thing just annihilated it. It's. I got goosebumps like this whole book just because I've been dying for this powerful, you know, bad female. Like Farrah is powerful too, but Nesta just like she she oozes bad girl vibes. Well, and and Farrah didn't really get the proper training. Like they gloss over the training a lot in Farrah's story. Cassian's like, you have a a basic groundwork. I'm like, does she though? I don't know. know? (laughs) Whereas with Nesta, he was like, starting from the beginning, like this, you need to know your footwork. You need to know, you know, all of this stuff that that was really intense and interesting. And uh, we glossed over it a little bit because after the mind stilling, before Cassian takes her to the blacksmith, he lets her train with the wooden practice sword. And she has that really powerful moment where one of my favorite quotes, and I actually have it on a poster that I'm going to put on my wall once my husband finishes the book, but the never again part Mm. where she's like, never again, never again would she be weak. Never again would she be at someone's mercy. Never again would she fall. Never again, never again, never again. And it's like, that is such a mantra for someone who like went through trauma. And I just... I love it. I love it so much. <laughs> yeah. I, I feel bad looking back because I remember just kind of hating on Nesta in the beginning because there was just no context for her being a certain way. And then you learn about everything she went through with Thomas and all of this stuff. And oh, that's such a great quote. I love that pick. Oh, after the blacksmith, what happens, Tara? Like there's a meeting, right? With Helian and... Oh, I love Helian. <laughs> I'm sorry. Helian is Tara so... Does. Like he is, he is right up there with my like snarky, like, I don't know, something no. about Helian just does it for me. So when he came in, I was like, oh, yay. Um, I also like his relationship with Nesta and how like <laughs> she just likes to ignore him. And it's hilarious to me. And maybe that's why I like Helian, because I can't wait for him to be back in the scene to be like knocked down a peg. <laughs> Do you, Sandra, I don't know if you know the, the fan theory that, um, uh, Nesta and Emery's favorite romance author is secretly Helian with under a pen name. <laughs> like he spends his spare time writing smutty romance. No, I've oh, never yeah. heard this fan theory. Oh, I yeah. love it though. It's it's super I can fun. See that too. Yeah, like he like, would spend see. his like free time just like writing, and then he's like, I don't want people to know that it's me, so I'm gonna use a pen name. But <laughs> I'm gonna go a little bit further and like say that maybe it's not him writing smutty like romance novels maybe it's his like autobiography that he's writing oh, there you because go. it sounds like he's also a bit smutty um <laughs> and like you know yeah i write what I, you know i could see you know? that this being like oh i'm just gonna write down the like one night stand i just had Ooh. <laughs> Yeah. And Tara was saying that Helian came in, but like he came in riding a Pegasus, like yes. a black Pegasus, which, yeah, what? But he only did that because he wasn't allowed to come in riding like a like team of the <laughs> like chariots. chariot. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> which cracked me up. He's like, fine, I won't ride eight or whatever the number was. I'll ride one. <laughs> Like, oh, I technically I like, followed your rules. Yeah. Well, I like that Reese was like, you win Owen or you don't come at all. And he's like, I'll just come in on one. <laughs> it's like, that's not what Rhysand said, but I'm I'm here for it. Yes. Yeah. So again, I, just, I like him. He's just so snarky and so like just himself. He's super mm-hmm. enjoyable. I just love how with every book, Sarah J. Mass introduces more lore and creatures and how she weaves all of this in together because it, it was so unexpected when I first read this. I was like, oh my God, they have Pegasus on screen? Like, 
I was obsessed with Fantasia and, you know, like the Pegasus and like the little centaurs and stuff like that. And I don't know. It's just ah, there's so much about this book I love. I cannot believe that I missed a chance to wear my Hercules shirt with Pegasus on it. The little baby one. Like, I forgot about the Pegasus until you just mentioned that. (laughs) And now I'm like kicking myself because I should have wore like I looked at it in my closet and it's like, "Uh, no, like, no, I should have worn my Pegasus (laughs) shirt. Sorry. Oh, Tara. Uh, there's a meme out there of the scene in Walt Disney's Hercules where Meg introduces herself to Hercules and uh-huh. she's like, the name is Meg. At least it, my friends call me Meg. At least they would have had new friends. And it was like, Nesta is Meg and Cassian is Hercules. And I was like, I think the reason I love their love story so much is because it's the exact same as Walt Disney's Hercules. Like they are okay. the same characters. Maybe that's why I love them, too, because that (laughs) is, like, my favorite movie probably of all time. And my kids would probably watch that a hundred times by the time they were three. Um, They can quote it. I won't say I'm in love was the first song I put on my Nesta playlist on Spotify. (laughs) (laughs) Well, that totally fits her. Like, she will not say she's in love. Um, (laughs) And does anybody else feel, like, really bad for Cassie in the whole movie? And again, yes, okay, now that you've called it out, I can see mirrors everywhere. But he's, like, this big, like, hulking dude that, like, you know, maybe doesn't have all the real-world experience he should. Um, And he's in love with this chick that's, like, go away. Yeah, I felt sorry for him, especially, like, when she's, like, it's sex only. Yeah. Like, oh, Oh, yeah, poor little Cassian's heart. I getting mean, to I, be in his mind it was so sad like his thoughts I was like oh yeah this is 100% real like this is yeah yeah I felt for both of them in that scene though because you can tell Nesta just cannot allow herself to be vulnerable even though she desperately wants to be in that moment like she wanted more than sex well, and she just couldn't ask for it and she mm. mentions that later because she's upset that he doesn't come back for like mm-hmm. a week after the first time she's like he didn't come back and then she even asks him she's like did you not like it she, like what was wrong like you didn't come back and i'm like yeah you're you want it to be more but you're hiding behind the like shield of if i say it's not more then he can't hurt me by okay. also wanting it to not be more yeah and in the the scene with resand and the sword uh, Amarin tells Resand that she thinks that the trove came into his possession because he's supposed to be high king of mm-hmm. Prithian. And Resand is like, no, all oh, that. Fair doesn't want that. Mm-hmm. Um, and there's a moment when Amarin says, you need to be careful because if you refuse to accept this responsibility, the power will transfer to somebody else. Like, but, or something oh, yeah. like that. I have a different theory because I don't think it came into Resand's. All right, well, you you share your theory, Tara, and then I'll share my theory. I think it came to Nesta, and Nesta just happened to be within Resand's court. I think Nesta is the one that was always supposed to be. High queen? High queen. Interesting. Ooh. Hmm. Well, so my theory is I think Resand was... It was being offered to Resand, but I think because he refuses to accept it, it's going to transfer to somebody else. And the somebody else is Lucian. And here is why. Because he is a product of autumn and day, and he has ties to the spring court, and now he has ties to the night court. So if And he has the friend in the dawn court who made his eye for him. So he has connections to almost every single court. And if he has a connection to winter and summer then he has like ties to every single court and would be the perfect person to unite them and become the high king which he does kind of have ties to summer and winter what was the other one winter summer and winter through resand because Mm -hmm. more is best friends with the chick from winter and then tarquin is in good with the night court so varian's in with amran Well, so he does have mm. ties. So I think that Elaine and Lucian will eventually become the high king and queen of Prithian. I'm a hardcore. I know Sandra's all as in Elaine forever. And it's like the one thing she and I will not ever agree on until 
Sarah J. Moss reveals the truth because as and Gwen belong together and we're going to get to why very that's soon. Fair. <laughs> that's fair. No, that's fair. We will get into more theory stuff like a little bit later in this episode, but no, I'm, I'm okay. I'm on board with anything. Sandra I'm open. As theory. I don't think as is going to end up with one person. Oh, <laughs> as according to Sarah J. Mass is a freak. <laughs> And his she shadows so like to hide places. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think Az deserves more love than everybody else. So I think Az is gonna get more love than everybody else from Gwen. And there is a certain part, and I'm just we'll just go into it. We're gonna skip ahead. <laughs> <laughs> I to, love it. So when the ribbon gets cut and yes. Azriel and Gwen have their little exchange and Nessa's like, oh, as you don't know what you just started. And she was like, you remember how Gwen was with the ribbon where she was like determined and tenacious. And like, she was like, you remember how Gwen was with the ribbon? You're the new ribbon as. And I was like, as is the new ribbon. Okay. Mm -hmm. And Sandra just made me read the bonus, bonus chapters. chapters that is as's like um, perspective of the scene where he is teaching Gwen. Like some new tricks to get the ribbon. Mm -hmm. And I'm with you. I like him with Gwen because like his shadows sing with her. Like mm -hmm. whereas with Elaine, they kind of just like back off. So I can see that being a good thing with both women though. Yeah. Like the happy shadows and then the shadows that are like when they back off, I'm thinking like that's peaceful for As to not have like this like shadow constantly following him. So I can see how both women might be a good fit for him. So my response to that is I think the important thing that Asriel has kind of said, I think he said it to Pharaoh, was a shadow singer isn't a job. It's who he is. So the shadows are a part of him. So Elaine chases the shadows away, and that could be a good thing, but it also kind of seems like he has to hide a part of who he is in order to be with her. Whereas mm -hmm. Gwen makes his shadows sing and calms them and they like reach for her and it almost makes it seem like she can embrace the shadow singer part of him. And that, okay. again, is yeah, why... I can, I can see both women. I think that there's more to come, obviously. <laughs> I am waiting for as a story. Me too. Boo, it's you so whore. Boo, you whore. <laughs> it's been hinted that as the story is coming though so mm -hmm. like i can't wait for the next books because i want to see as um, here's my theory because it has been like boo, you whore. cement <laughs> yes it has been cemented that the blood duel is an autumn court thing since we know that lucian's father is actually you know day court helian I don't think the rules are going to apply. I want to see Elaine still hook up with Asriel and then they bypass the whole blood duel thing because of that information coming out. But there was so much uh, imagery or symbolism about Elaine being like a flower and needing sunlight too. So I think she'll definitely end up with, you know, Lucian because of the whole day court thing. Like it makes sense. But... Um, but I also see <laughs> Elaine having more of a like we saw it in this book her having some feistiness and some like bite to her i think people haven't allowed her to be something other than oh, the, the innocent like, flower girl innocent flower i think that there's something behind that i think she will or she truly is something more than just what the day court would bring out of her she's and a so little bit cunning. i think she fits somewhere more like gray she's a little cunning like a, to put a it fuck. in like two yes to put it in 2000s terminology i think elaine's gonna get her wild out stage <laughs> yes so there is so much description about her like liking to get torn up and dirty and that kind of like her hands dirty so i i think we're gonna see that and it's gonna be really fun to watch mm -hmm. so i'm not shooting down the gwyn and as <laughs> ship I'm Just, sorry, <laughs> but I'm sorry. I still want to see her have some fun with Asriel. And like, it just breaks my heart because Asriel the whole time is just like, I'm, I'm not pure enough for someone like Elaine. She's so like 
unblemished and perfect. And he's just, his self perception is just so bad. I could also see him thinking that about Gwen too. Mm -hmm. Because Gwen didn't have a choice in how she became tarnished. If you're saying that she is somehow less than Elaine in the unblemished. Well, and, and she has an innocence about her also and like a mm-hmm. timidness that I think yeah. Asriel will be able to bring out in her. And also, I think that the Elaine stuff is something that Lucian needs desperately, too, because I say all this stuff about how he's got ties to all of these courts, but he's very broken right now because he felt so betrayed by his whole family and then he was indebted to Tamlin for so long. And I think that he was abused by Tamlin. You know, mm-hmm. he was he was in the situation Pharaoh was in for 50 years. And no one wants to talk about how gaslit Lucian probably yeah. was by Tamlin during that whole time. Like he had nobody and Tamlin was like, fine, you can come live with me. And then Tamlin was Tamlin. Like I just like he basically like, well, if you come live with me, then you have to side with me on everything. On He's everything. Like, That's yeah. not how a friendship is. You know, I think I think Lucian is still very young and is in need of a little bit of Elaine's like <laughs> nurturing, you know, getting her hands dirty stuff. Uh, so especially when he finds out who his dad is. Yes. <laughs> because like I'm sorry, but like having Hillian as your dad would have to be like, like it would have to throw you for a loop you know yeah. like what the hell <laughs> yeah i also want to see if lucian got any of the spell breaking i think mm-hmm. he did because if if he is his dad which we're all assuming yeah like did he get any of the the powers and if so where are they hiding and how has he not noticed this and I think he hasn't noticed it because he's constantly being beat down. Like, I think he was in a very strong period of mourning after Jasminda, I think is her name. Mm-hmm. Yeah. After she died. And then he was living with Talon. And I'm, <laughs> I love, I, I don't love Talon, but I like Talon. I think he deserves a redemption arc. I kind of feel like he's going to get one with Briar, the human girl that went to the winter court. But I don't see, Tamlin being a very good friend of Lucian so I have I I have two theories one sorry just gonna throw this out there (laughs) let's keep while I was reading like Lucian and Elaine like I did not get the sense that they were mates like I know that it's been told that they were mates but in every story that I've read there can be a real mate and then you have like a follow-up mate if something happened to that mate I think Jasminda was his mate and when she died like he got a second mate but I'm not sure that something didn't get crossed in that like I don't feel like the same bond that happened to Feyre and Cassian and Nesta and Reese is what's going on with Lucian and Elaine like I just don't get that same feeling as it's being written I, so I have a theory piggybacking off of this idea because in that bonus chapter with Asriel Sarah J Mass is putting it out there that the cauldron can be wrong right because as is like mm-hmm. but can it be wrong can it be wrong it might not necessarily be about him or Lucian but what do you think of the idea of more said that she had a mate the female that died in the past. So my theory is that Eris potentially, I don't know, I feel like he might be gay and that the day that Moore was thrown at Autumn Court's boundary line, he was with uh, the Dawn Court High Lord just because of some description of the voice that was talking because he's a healer. So the don't touch her was him saying like, don't heal her. And I think that he, it's not supposed to be known that he was with the Don Court High Lord. Um, so I don't know. And just the fact that you've read Throne of Glass, like a few books at least, right, Jesse? Yeah. I know what happened. Yeah. I need to, I need to actually read them. I got yeah. through, I think I got through Crown of Midnight before I was like, I can't read these anymore. So I was super mad because I think Dorian <sighs> deserves everything. Yes. But- there's Dorian's there's a pair quote of, of like I'll bleed whatever you want me to I'm like yes no. yeah I'm there 
<laughs> Dorian. So Throne of Glass was set up as a love triangle between uh, Kalina, Dorian, and Kale. And I was like, he's a prince. I want that one. I'm picking that one. <laughs> and the then prince, yeah. it continued to, like, I kept continuing to be like, Dorian, Dorian. And then, like, she didn't. She, I was like, who's Rowan? I don't care about him. I want her to end up with Dorian. And then I was like, I am not a fan of this man in person i don't like her at all and then i found out that like i I got to the point where like they started like flirting and i was like nope i'm out (laughs) who he ends up with is like in my opinion 10 times better for him yeah yeah i'm sure you're right i'm still team you have to read that part i never really liked rowan but even there like sarah j mass planted the seeds that they can be wrong about their mates because rowan believed he had a diff- totally different mm-hmm. mate for the yeah. longest time. So yeah. I yeah. definitely think something is going on. But also there was a parallel with um, Manon's first Astrid because the unclean being carved into her flesh and then the fact that Moore had a note nailed to her abdomen. Mm-hmm. It makes me wonder if she got pregnant. Was it really Cassian? Or is that just the excuse and understanding that her and Cassian are saying? Because like rereading uh, Frost and Starlight when she's having the flashback and the voice that Moore hears is it's actually Eris's voice, but he's the one that says, oh, she slept with an Illyrian like very loudly. So I don't know if it's like that's the story that we're going to talk about or what. So I don't know. Like that's that's where my head's at with this whole thing. I'm sorry, Sandra. I'm against you. I don't think Elaine... I don't I don't think we've met the person Elaine's gonna end up with. I don't oh. think Az is it either. Okay. Because like I'm with as this whole reason that I read for like him wanting Elaine is Cassian's mated with Nesta and Reese is mated with Feyre. And like why would the cauldron bring three sisters if not for the three brothers? Like why would I be the one left out? And I think that that is Az's trauma talking. Like, Mm -hmm. I'm being left out again. Like, my family doesn't, like, I don't fit anymore. But I don't think we've met. Like, I think Gwen is, mm, I think they're going to be very, very good friends. I don't, I don't know. I'm, I'm shipping Gwen and Az, but I don't know. Because I think that there's more. I think there's more to Az that we're going to find out. But I don't think we've met Elaine's person. I just, you know, there's going to be drama with Gwen ending up with the necklace like you know that Elaine is gonna see it around her neck and it's just so weird I'm like there's no way like you can start a healthy like good relationship with something weird like that right yeah anyone I mean, else think that I don't know maybe yeah. I don't know I, I'm I'm trying not <laughs> to think about the necklace too much the thing is is, is 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 it was a bonus chapter it wasn't like a part of the book and so it's canon it happened but I've noticed that with the bonus chapters like SJM doesn't lean on those for other plot points. So I don't mm. know how much the necklace is going to factor into the story. I will say a lot of people have argued that Elaine is going to eventually reject the mate bond with Lucian because mm-hmm. Reese talks about the fact that like it can be done. So somebody's going to reject somebody is kind of the, the understanding there. I think it already happened. I think Eris and more were mates because Rhysian said he thinks that like the mating bond really was just like this cosmic way to bring about the most powerful offspring but it can be incorrect so I think Eris knew Moore's preferences they became mated immediately and when he realized that she would be ter- like she would be- have a horrible time on the autumn court he rejected her to protect her because he has a strong mate bond thing but she rejected the mate bond so they're still linked because Rhysian said that they will always be linked but Eris just like he protects his mother he was protecting his mother during the High Lord meeting he's protecting more in his own way by letting her live her life and be free so I think that that is the like rejected mate bond and I think that if Elaine was going to reject Lucian she would have done it by now I think she's struggling they're going to have a really hard complex thing but even when lucian left for the continent like to go find bassa like when he was leaving elaine took a step towards him before he went out away because she's struggling and i think that she's still having like these weird like i want to get to know him but 
I love Grayson and he did this horrible thing to me and he sided with Tamlin and there was this horrible, like she has all these conflicting emotions regarding Lucian. That's going to make a really powerful love story whenever Sarah writes it. <laughs> so that's my I, opinion. I I agree with the airs thing. I called that out a few, I don't know when I called that out episodes ago, but I, I think that he is actually a really good guy and he's like hiding behind the fact that he needs to be a bad guy. Mm -hmm. um, but I thought that he he did that for more. Whatever he was doing, he was doing it for more, which is also why, like, in this book, he tells Reese that he needs to talk to more. Well, and he's he's said more knows he's, why he did it. Yeah. He's even I think he told Cassie and he was like, ask her what really happened. Resand mm -hmm. knows. Morgan knows. Or I think he said Morgan knows. Resand suspects. So ask her what really happened and what the truth is because she's hiding it and Cassian's like whatever <laughs> you just suck <laughs> yeah see again this is like very Hercules like that sounds exactly like something Hercules would do without like like thinking about it He'd be like no you just suck yeah but no they're uh, they're totally mates but there was a scene because moore has been spending all this time winnowing them to meet at spring court with Eris and stuff and she's gone he's he sniffs her in the air like he still can sense her so yeah i mean it's so weird there's like little sprinkles like that they're definitely Cassian yeah. was like how does er how can Eris still sense that she was like how can he still smell her i'm like because they're mates <laughs> mm -hmm. exactly yeah i'm telling you i'm telling you um <laughs> Unless she changes okay, it, because we, we all know. we should just titled this the theories episode, <laughs> as opposed to, like, trying to go over a book. <laughs> Sorry, um, I went down the rabbit hole. <laughs> no, this is good. I'm like, okay, this is the last book in Akatar for, you know, until the next one comes until out. Until so like, comes we out. We can talk about all the theories that we want. Yeah. Oh, we'll have another theory. Instead of <laughs> Elaine marrying anybody that we've previously met, right? What if Elaine is our connection to um, the other, like, courts that Moore is trying to get oh, involved? Oh, and, and yeah. Rask and stuff? Like, we haven't met them. Maybe as this person's there, too. I don't know. Um, I, I like him with Gwyn. Don't get me wrong. But I'm just saying, like, we don't have enough to really know that that's who he's going to end up with. Yeah. Well, on that note, I think that more is going to end up with Emery and I have even less for that to like <laughs> solidify, but Emery no, sees there. her in the library and oh, is like, I forgot how beautiful she is. And I was like, there we go. <laughs> like, mm -hmm. like you've got, you've got Thayer and Resand, you've got Nesta and Cassian, you've got Asriel and Gwyn, you've got Elaine and Lucian, you've got Amron and Varian, you've got more and Emery. Everyone's coupled up and life is happy except Tamlin and Eris. Who, like barely count. I, I don't think that that's like that's too easy well like for Sarah yeah. Jane like there's gonna be some like that's too easy but I am there with you with Emery because isn't there something mentioned by her cousin Bellius like doesn't he like make a sneer about her I mean Chinese, he says a few that his, yeah, he's that an that asshole hints, a lot of nice <laughs> not nice things that oh. hints that she is lesbian he might have I'm not sure. I feel sure. like I picked up on that. And it's like, I can see it. I can also see her with more. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The only thing I really, like, really cemented that for me is that she mm -hmm. saw more in the library and was like, mm -hmm. I forgot how beautiful she is. And she clearly doesn't like men because she mm -hmm. grew up, like, like, I don't think that it was a good decision she made, but, like, she had a lot of really bad experiences with men. So it makes sense Horrible. that she isn't, like, interested in them in any way shape or form you know like she has some respect for Cassian and Rhysand and Asriel but it's like a healthy distant respect you know and so and more is strong too in her own mm -hmm. right what do you think this private Ethelwood estate that more has been hiding from everyone is about I don't know I don't know it's weird and I wasn't I don't know what you guys talked about in Frost and Starlight because it hasn't come out yet but I am curious what the thing that was following her was I want to know if it was something Eris related or if it was Bryaxis or if it was something completely different. And I'm very excited to find out more about more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, if she's basing it off of like mythology, more Morgan in Irish and Celtic mythology is like the, the goddess of like 
war, basically. So I I can't remember if she had anybody that she was with, though. But like that would be interesting if she brought that in and like the Celtic mythology side of it, and she ends up with somebody, yeah, that resembles <laughs> the Morgan's mate in mythology. That's actually funny. Uh, that kind of brings us back to the the summary, kind of back to what we were talking about with Healy and coming in on the Pegasus, <laughs> because Nesta's in awe of the Pegasus, and Cassian was even like, if he didn't have wings. He would like be envious that Helian had those, and then they talks about how like a lot of them disappeared. Pegasus mm-hmm. is a Valkyrie thing. Mm-hmm. Like the Valkyries had Pegas- flying Pegasi, flying Pegasuses, mm-hmm. whatever. <laughs> <laughs> they had them, and in Norse mythology, and so I think that Nesta and Emery and Gwyn will eventually get their own Pegasus. <laughs> I don't know what the right plural is. Pegasi. But, so, yeah. They'll get, they'll, I just like saying Pegasi. They'll each get their own so. Pegasus and it'll be awesome. Because that's the, it was even like, I want one of those. And then they make like the little miniature one and stuff when they're in the in the House of Wind. So I, I think that that's going to happen. Nessa's not interested in Helian in any way, shape or form, but she doesn't want his horse. So, but OK, let's. So. On with, like, our story, mm-hmm. we figure out that Nesta can, like, talk people into things mm-hmm. or, like, trick them into things um, because she's such an amazing dancer. And we get this information from <laughs> Elaine because somebody was being mean to Elaine at a party, probably because Elaine is, like, gorgeous, right? A rich heiress but, was jealous of her beauty. Yep. Yeah. And so Nesta being Nesta, the bitchy little, like, bitch that she is she's like you know what i'm gonna trick the guy that she wants into asking for me and ignoring her completely and so she dances with him and like he does ask for her hand right she was only 14 yes and and she's like he was gonna wait like "Mm -hmm. Mm mm-hmm he was can we all just establish that it was a little rude of elaine to tell that story in front of (laughs) cassie She, Elaine's not dumb. She knows what's happening between Nesta and Cassian because they all do. And for her to be like, "Oh yeah, Nesta like can trap a prince into wanting to marry her," <laughs> it it is rude, but it's pretty on par with how these sisters interact with each other. Because speaking of rude, what news does like Nesta blurt out to Feyre when she's oh, all yeah. pissed off and in a huff and puff too? Right when yeah. they have like this <gasps> confrontation at Amran's, it's so funny because Amran's having sex with Varian, and she just like bursts <laughs> sure. through the door, and Amran hops off, and Varian's just like, "Oh shit!" <laughs> you know, giggling behind the sheet, and then they just have a throwdown. <laughs> yeah, and he runs half naked to Farah's art studio to get her, and Farah's like, <laughs> "Stop being mean to Amran, Nesta," and Nesta's like, "Amran's being mean to you. <laughs> Everyone's being mean to you." Yeah. Yeah, I didn't like that scene, obviously. I think it was messed up. But I do think, and this is something that the fandom in general has like a huge issue with, like Rhysand hiding the pregnancy Mm -hmm. from Feyre from the beginning. I can see a little bit of his reasoning, right? Like, I feel like he had a good, like, thought in that he didn't want to take the joy of the pregnancy. But that was also, like, very limiting to, like, his trust and, like, Feyre's ability like, she has been yeah. smart. She could have probably helped you figure out a way around this had you given her the opportunity. Yeah. But instead, you're like, well, she she's an emotional woman. She probably can't, like, you know, figure this out. Yeah. Like, he, does a, he does a tam-tam. Yeah. Mm-hmm. 100%. Yeah. It's like, well, we can <laughs> see why Farrah liked both of you. There's I mean, a little bit of a connection there. Rizan started slipping for us like what the last episode just how he starts acting and maybe this whole baby making part is like a big chunk of that but also mm-hmm. how did you feel how you know after the winter solstice party when he stopped Asriel from kissing Elaine how that scene went down like they're adults come on now <laughs> like, I was if fine she with wants it. to kiss him she wants to kiss him like the mate, if the mate bond isn't going to stop her, then maybe the mate bond isn't as strong as you like want it to be. Because uh, I feel like, <laughs> like the mate bond, if it is strong, should stop you from wanting to like make out and you know do more 
I mean, mean, Nesta slept with a whole lot of guys, though, and her and Cassian were pretty much bonded since the beginning, you know, per Cassian, like when she was was a human. And Feyre was was going to marry Tamlin. (laughs) Feyre was going to straight up marry a different guy. (laughs) I was fine with it because I didn't want him to kiss Elaine, but also... I just just wanted to hear you say you were fine with Az and Elaine kissing. (laughs) <laughs> uh, I was fine with Resam stopping it because I didn't want it to happen. But also, I think it's interesting because a point that has come up is we saw Resand through pay- through Feyre's perspective. And so it almost makes sense for him to now be a little bit less shiny because we're seeing him through Nesta's perspective and through the perspective of like other people. I think that it is, it's something where it was hard at first, just like for me, it was hard to read Tamlin in A Court of Mist and Fury because it felt like a completely different character. But then my friend made me go back and reread A Court of Thorns and Roses and like look, and I was like, oh no, the seeds were planted from the beginning. And the seeds were planted with Resand from the beginning. He's all about giving people choices, but he's also all about like manipulating and orchestrating things so that people don't get a say in whether or not they hurt themselves and whether or not like he like he puts himself in harm's way in order to prevent them from getting to choose whether or not they're going to be hurt and he's putting himself in front of whether or not Sarah can choose whether or not she's going to be hurt and whether or not like I I think that Resand said I don't it's been a long time since I read the bonus chapter I didn't read it for this but I know he was like her mate we need her mate for logistics of the court or whatever but i think he also knows that if elaine was going to reject the mate bond she would have done it by now and he doesn't want asriel getting his heart broken from oh, elaine yeah. eventually picking lucian over him so i don't think that resand is a good guy in that respect but i also think that it's on brand for him and i think he ha- he's it's coming from a decent place even though he's not handling it well. So yeah. that's fair. Okay. So Cassian, speaking of like the when people finally figure out these big things, when Cassian finally tells Nesta about the swords that she made, like that scene cracked me up so much. <laughs> what would you so name like, a sword you if are you like had just to. digging yourself a hole? You just keep digging. No. Yeah. This is how you But know. at least she goes down all 10,000 <laughs> steps. Yeah, yeah. In a rage. Yeah. I don't know that it counts. Well, it doesn't count. She decided it didn't count because she was in a rage. And, like, I think her power propelled her forward with it. Yeah. But but him just kind of blurting out the, like, oh, yeah, everybody decided we weren't going to know. I was against we took, it. We I'm took like, a vote on oh, whether to tell you or not. your mouth shut. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's just... It's just so it's sweet, in my opinion, because Cassian is so honest and like like it comes out as thoughtlessness. But really, he's just so earnest and he's so honest that he can't he can't make her feel better by hiding the truth from her. So he is trying to explain it and it's coming out not the way that it should. But that's why he was so vehemently against it when they were like, mm-hmm. Nesta can't know about these swords. She can't find out. He was like, what? <laughs> you know, yeah. like, because it was just so off-putting for him. He wears his heart on his sleeve. And you see it even when he has to play politicking with people. He sucks at it. He is not good at, you know, maneuvering around people that way. He's just, yeah. this is what you get with our big muscle, muscle head. <laughs> well, and it, it, like I said, it comes out as being like thoughtless and and like like silly almost. But it's just that he there's not a deceptive bone in his body and being a courtier comes with a little bit Mm -hmm. of deception and a little bit of manipulation and that like that's just not in him you know i do like that they are like yin and yang though because she is very deceptive she is very cunning and he's just like "Mm." (laughs) yeah when resand kicks nesta out it's it was almost like the tarquin death ruby scene it was like She's out of this city. I don't want to see her. Like, she better not be seen in Valeris. And 
And this was, I think, the scene that I disliked Reese the most. Ooh. Because he's basically punishing her for telling the truth. Now, she did not do it in a good way. But she, again, I think Feyre deserves to know that truth. And Reese is the culprit to the first wrong action. Like, he could have told Feyre in the right way. And because mm -hmm. he chose not to do that, he allowed somebody else to be able to tell Feyre in not a right way. Because, like, anybody who found out about that pregnancy who knew anything about Illyrians would have known that, right? It's not like it was, like, some huge secret that only a few people know that an Illyrian has never been born to somebody who's not Illyrian, right? And he told everybody. He told oh, Helian. Yeah. He told... Yeah. I think and Thiessen so, knew about like, it because they wanted Thiessen's help with it. There were so many ways she could have found out about that in a wrong way. Mm -hmm. And he was fine with that. But then he, like, lays the full blame at Nesta's feet. He doesn't even, like, admit to any wrongdoing. He's just like, it's all your fault. And takes it out on her without, again, talking to her sister who's the one who has been wronged this whole time about what she thought. And I'm just like, dude, like, this is Tamlin. Like, Tamlin did not, like, ask for anybody's... I'm like... <laughs> Rhysand would be so mad at us if you heard us telling, talking about it this way. Like, it just, it just bugged me. I'm like, you are doing exactly what you hated for somebody else to do to her. To yeah. her. Yeah. But and to be and fair... Oh, go ahead. No, I was just going to say, in Feyre's defense, she handled it so well. I was crying mm -hmm. when I was reading, like, Feyre just being, like, handling it with such grace, you know? Like, mm -hmm. oh, you know, I'm going to die. <laughs> so I, he didn't give her enough credit. Feyre handles most things with grace because she's she a very logical, like, okay, well, let's think through. Like, it's not mm -hmm. going to do me any favors to, like, have an extremely emotional reaction. And I think that that's the, like... The sisters, too, because Nesta is full emotions, like, at all times. She's, like, she's the cancer of the group, right? She needed the mind-stilling. <laughs> yes, she did. She's the cancer of the group. Whereas, like, Feyre is, like, more logical and let's think through it. And then Nesta's just over here, like, I'll do what everybody tells me to do kind of thing. And so she's the follower. And Nesta and Feyre are the leaders, but they're leaders in complete completely different ways so i have two i have two thoughts here now the first <laughs> one is i'm thinking about those like instagram things where like there's two people in every relationship there's the the dreamer and then there's the like just like the logical one and it's so clear that resand is the emotional dreamer like like reactionary and fair is the one who kind of has to reel him in and be like no 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 we're not doing that mm -mm, nope <laughs> like let's think this uh -huh. through like she goes mm -hmm. behind him and cleans up his mess kind of a thing but also like resand has been unfair to nesta through the whole book and it, mm -hmm. it comes from the fact that I, he's got a whole lot of resentment over the way she treated vera like it's understandable that he like doesn't like her and has a lot of issues with her and that tracks and that makes sense. However, like he does it to the detriment of Nessa's progress. Like the, when, he, when he sees her with Gwen and he goes out of his way to be like, be respectful to Gwen or whatever it is that he said to her in like the mind to mind conversation. And Nessa mm -hmm. got all offended and Cassian was like, did you really have to do that? And the answer was no, he didn't really have to do that because Nessa was doing well with Gwen and in fact knows Gwen better than Resand does. And has like, <laughs> they they figured out their stuff on their own. And if he was really worried about her being unkind to the priestesses, why did he let her go work in the library in the first place? Like, yeah. Let her work is even like, well, true. You know, forced her to nice work in the to library. Him. Yeah. So like, he forced her to work there. So, like, yeah. But so he wasn't but, really concerned about Gwen's feelings there. He was trying to hurt Nesta. And yeah. he, like, and, and, I don't think he consciously was trying to hurt Nesta. I think in his brain, he was doing it to protect Gwen, but that's not like really why he wanted to do it. He wanted to hurt her because he's still mad. And again, I think it's fair. It's hard to let, like, let that kind of thing go. I, I have two comments over that because yeah. one, we're, we're just like, 
<laughs> down rabbit holes here. So one, I agree that he's still mad at Nesta, but I don't understand why he's not still mad at Elaine. Elaine was there too. Feyre was the youngest. Nesta's not the only one who forced her to go buy, like go hunt and go put herself on the line to feed them. Because like, everyone them forgets about Elaine. Yes. Nesta intentionally is loud so that everyone forgets about Elaine. Yes. I am even like more mad at him that he's taking everything out on Nesta and doesn't even like take a step back and be like, well, there were two sisters that could have been helping. But secondly, I think that part of his like wanting to like just be mean to Nesta is also in protection of Cassian. Because he sees like Cassian's wearing his heart on his sleeves. He knows that they're mates and that Nesta is not doing what he thinks she should, basically. And so I think, like you said, he is very um, open to doing whatever he needs to do in protection of those that he loves. And I think that scene in particular with Gwen was just to like get on her nerves because she is not treating Cassian right. Yeah. Well, maybe and I... not Feyre. I think he's got a point there because poor Cassian gets trampled on a lot before yeah, he does. Nesta lets him in. She she puts him through his paces, unfortunately. And I and it's not intentional. Like I genuinely think she wasn't like being mean to Cassian, like in order to like make him prove anything, but he did have to prove something before she let him in and put him in that same place that she put Elaine and after this book is done now, I think that I'm let's like that's why I'm really excited for the next like book because I'm really excited to see Nesta defend Cassian the way she's defended Elaine because it's going to happen. I don't think that she was making him prove something. I think she was making herself prove something. Well, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't think he proved anything that he loved her any more than he did the very first. And she even mentions that in the last part of the book. Like, he's been there from the first time we met. He has been all in this whole time. Like, there was nothing more he needed to prove. I think she needed to prove to herself that she was worth that all in. Yeah. Well, and she's pull- she pulls an Edward Cullen through this whole book. Like, uh-huh. like like hurting herself despite the fact that it's hurting the person she cares about the most like Mm -hmm. which is annoying (laughs) as an as an as an oldest daughter of three daughters we beat ourselves up (laughs) enough and a lot gets placed on our shoulders anyway i feel like that's kind of how rizan was treating nesta too is like you're the oldest so like you basically should have been handling everything and just blaming her come on but it's like like, good god no wonder nesta decided to make the house her friend (laughs) Right <laughs> out of all of this, I love that house. Uh, okay, and yes. don't we all? <laughs> fact, I love the fact that, like, later on, the house wasn't like programmed that way by Reese, which is what Nesta thought mm-hmm. is that Reese did that, but Nesta did it because Nesta needed a friend, and that was her wish. So she basically made an enchanted fucking house. Like, how do I get this power? I would like Dude. to have a friend too, guys. <laughs> a friend who cleans up after me and cooks all my meals and, and gives me smutty books. You for me. Smutty books for me. <laughs> my like, can we just establish like, like my favorite? Like, this is my favorite book. For I, I do like the steamy scenes, even though I think there's too many of them. And I love, I love Nesta's meltdown. I love the never mm-hmm. again quote. I, there's another quote that we'll get to that I love, but, like, that house. So it's, like, it's, like, the library scene in Beauty and the Beast where he, like, gifts her the library and all the girls are, like, perfect man. Like, he yeah. gives her a library. Like, <laughs> yeah. I'm, like, it's the house now. Like, that yeah. is my, like, grown-up version of the Beauty and the Beast library. Like, yeah. And nobody gifted it for her. She made it her damn self. <laughs> yes. The sleepover scene when oh. they all come to Nesta's side is one of my favorite scenes. This the whole Valkyrie plot line mm-hmm. I loved. Mm-hmm. I was like waiting for like the warrior women to break out. And yes. I love the blood rite scene so much. Oh yeah. It's just oh so good. Yeah. Mm-hmm. No, I yeah, I I just like and that's the thing is the dynamic between Gwen, Emery, and Nesta is so like it appeals to my like 90s 2000s 
girl group rom-com style heart so much like I just want I don't care about Elaine and Morgan if I'm being real honest I want a (laughs) happily ever after for my three Valkyries (laughs) like like what 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 are we doing with our lives if we're not like working towards that because and and there there's three friends that that were created through times of trauma and through like this brokenness that that only the others in the group can really recognize and see and they're different traumas because you've got you've got Nesta who has like self-destructive trauma you've got Emery that has parental trauma and you've got Gwen who has you know yeah yeah and yeah. and so they're all three different kinds of trauma so it's not like they bond over shared experiences they bond over shared healing and that is is just really beautiful but I also like I too want them to have their happily ever after with a dude or a woman, whichever they prefer. But I also love that they created their own happy ending in this book. Mm-hmm. Like it could end right there for them. And they're going to be content with their lives. They're going to be happy because they did it. <laughs> and they don't need no damn man or woman. Like, <laughs> like they're good on their own. I. I agree with you. Like, I want them to get love too, but like, mm. I love that they, they, they were have themselves each other. and they, they made it happen. Mm-hmm. I just love how Resan spends all this time outcasting Nesta from their inner circle and she just goes and forges her own. Mm-hmm. Really, so satisfying. But she needed to. And that was something that like, I struggled with. Honestly, the first time I read it, I was like, why can't they all get along? They're all good people. They're all like good characters. Like they should all be friends. But it was beautiful to see that, like, Nesta can be a good character and not be in Feyre's group. Like, there's obviously that connection because of the familial bond, and now she's got it through Cassian and Feyre. But Nesta's not in the inner circle. She's not a part of Feyre, Rhysan, Cassian, Asriel, and more, and Amran. She is her own group. She has her own friends. Like, it's, it's the same as, like, I'll go visit my family for winter solstice, but I'm still going to go hang out with my friends mm-hmm. and get a drink on Friday. I think that they needed that too. All mm-hmm. three sisters need to branch out mm-hmm. because um, they were stuck together. Like they had no other options besides to sleep in the same bed. Yep. Like I think that they've had too much of each other. Yeah. Like yeah. I think that they, in order to love each other the way that they need to, they need to be away from each other. And to have a life outside of each other. Yeah. Well, that was that was like really obvious here with Nesta. Like, it makes sense. As sad as it is that Nesta and Elaine had that falling out. The the scene where Elaine brings up like all you care about is what my trauma did to you, like, was real because like Nesta spent Nesta made Elaine the sole focus of her life for so long. And it it was stifling for Elaine, but it also was stifling for Nesta. So her mm-hmm. getting taken out of that and kind of getting that distance and then being put into a safe space where she could forge connections that are healthy, you know, because she'll, again, just like Cassian is now in that Elaine spot, Gwen and Emery are also in that, like, central, I will fight tooth and nail to defend my, you know, person mindset that Nesta has. And, like, which we see in the blood right when she makes the line in the sand you know but it it it's healthy because Gwen and Emery do the same for her in a way that mm-hmm. Elaine did not return for Nesta not as like a fault for Elaine but just because like she didn't have the same tools I I am gonna fault Elaine on that comment <laughs> because she made a comment I'm sorry no, she made a comment about how all Nesta thought about was her trauma, but Elaine has not, like, acknowledged that Nesta also had a trauma there. Like, nobody has acknowledged. They assume because Nesta handled it like a strong person that it did not affect her, like, going in that cauldron. And the only effect that happened to her was what happened to Elaine. Yeah. And I'm sorry, but that is very disrespectful. I think for Elaine to like focus on, well, all you think about is what this did to you, like me having to go in that cauldron. But like Elaine didn't even like acknowledge the fact that Nessa 
also went in that cauldron. Nesta also witnessed their dad dying. Nesta also, even though she handled it strong, she also had the same exact trauma. And I think she is projecting on Elaine so she doesn't have to face her own trauma in those moments. Well, and that was kind of revealed to Caspian at the lake, right? After the, so they, so, so Rhysand kicks Nesta out of the city and they go on that really aggressive hike and they do, you know, they do like Cassian is like mean to her, you know, because mm-hmm. he's ticked at her too, but it's therapeutic in a way that Nesta is able to handle because Nesta is so strong. And I think that Feyre did try to get her to fate, like Feyre, tried to get her to face her trauma the same way mm-hmm. she tried to get elaine to face her trauma and nesta like had hardened herself around it so much that she couldn't she couldn't process her trauma the way that elaine did so they do this grueling hike that like causes her to like be exhausted until they finally get to the lake and she just breaks down and she does that it's this heart-wrenching I, heart-wrenching I like i ugly mm-hmm. cry every time i read it like heart-wrenching scene where she tells cassian about how much she hates herself and how much she still blames herself for everything that Pharaoh went through. And how much she hates herself for the fact that she let her father die. And Cassian was mm-hmm. even like, it wasn't your fault. But Nesta's like, I let him die with hate in my heart. Like, the last thing he did was tell me he loved me. And it, I still hated him. And like, this like, I'm like getting teary thinking about it. I know. But like... She- she was but, sharing all of the mean things that she did with her father, too. She has so many unresolved issues with her father. Yeah. I, just, I feel for her. She was the oldest, and she has a lot of shit about her mom, too, which is super weird. Yeah. Like, I want to know more about this mom. <laughs> yeah, I well, just hate that nobody in the friend group acknowledges anything. <laughs> that All they see is Nesta is a bitch, and that's all they want to see. But, like, there's so much behind Nesta being a bitch that if they really tried, they could see. Mm-hmm. And I think Feyre is the only one that is like willing to give her the benefit of the doubt. And Cassian, of course. But like, I think everybody else is like, oh no, she's just being a bitch and she's just focusing on everybody else. And like, and it's just, to me, I think that they like gloss over her because she does appear to be handling it and or can handle it. I think the only reason Farah can see it is because of that, like, just to rewind all the way back to book one, the conversation she and Nesta have after Talon sends her back and Nesta, like, mm-hmm. reveals that she was going to go over the wall for Farah and, like, that her iron will prevented Talon's grant glamour from taking effect. Like, that, co- like, that reconciliation moment that I think is glossed over, in my opinion, by, like, the fandom and, and in the book itself. Like, we just kind of completely ignore that because of how protective she is of Elaine, like, in books two and beyond. Like, she had that for Feyre also, even with how much she resented Feyre and all of that stuff. Like, they have this, and when, and Feyre, like, teaches her to paint and all of this stuff. Because Nesta is Nesta, and and it takes all kinds of people for the world to go around. And so she's not going to be as, like, logical as Feyre, and she's not going to be as soft and sweet as Elaine. And she has this hardness and this steelness and she's not a people person. And that's what's so beautiful about that lake scene is Cassian is like, you're not broken. There's nothing wrong with who you are. Like, like you need to let people in and you need to like understand that you're not alone and you need to heal your trauma. But you don't have to become like this soft, sweet, Feyre Elaine person to, we love you how you are, Nesta. Yeah. And it, it, yeah. He's like, I see you. I accept you. And you don't have to do anything to earn that. Yeah. I love that then she goes to Gwen and she's like, Can I go to church with you so I can hear music? Yeah. And Gwen's like, Yes. Come. Oh, yes. And then Nesta scries like accidentally mm-hmm. and finds the heart, right? Yeah. And it's uh-huh. like actually there. Mm-hmm. in the prison mm-hmm. and i love that scene too um, um like the showdown with yeah the with, showdown with, with lanthus yes <laughs> and like cassian's like run run and this is like bitch please you're gonna die i mean she did run at first but then she like <laughs> plucked the string and went back and he's getting yeah. 
just pummeled. <laughs> and that was a super like, cathartic moment for her, too, because it was kind of a flashback to the Raven scene. She left mm-hmm. Feyre, and I think it tore her up that she ran to Cassian when Feyre stayed behind because it felt like another one of her failures. So this time she was able to go back and protect Cassian the way she didn't get to protect Feyre. To yeah. her defense, when she did that, Feyre had powers well, that yeah. she did not or did not <laughs> know how to use, right? And in this sense, she knew a little bit more about her powers. Yeah. Um, so, like, to her defense, I would probably be running to and be like, hey, you're the one with, like, seven different kingdoms worth of power. Like, use something. Yeah. Use something. I don't, um, I definitely don't blame her for the Raven scene, but it was just, I think she felt guilty. She blames herself for everything. Yeah. yeah. So I think it was a little bit cathartic for her to get to have that opportunity to mm-hmm. do that for Cassian. And I did, I did enjoy Lanthus's like vision that he gave her of like <laughs> their future together. And like, even that had a smutty part to it. <laughs> um, but... <laughs> But I did enjoy like him showing her what she could be because I told Sandra last episode, I'm like, I think she's going to be a queen. Like she is going to be like the baddest of the bad or could be the baddest of the bad. Right. And um, so I loved that. And I love that he's like, that's not that knife. Like it can't kill me. And then it did. My husband, when he was reading, I think it was when he was reading in Court of Mist and Fury, theorized that Nesta would become one of the human queens and she would give the book, the other half of the book to Feyre and Rhysand because he was like, she's so regal and she has like what it takes mm-hmm. to be a, like a human queen. And then obviously she turned into a fae, so that didn't happen. But like he definitely was like, she has that in her. So it was a really cool scene. Tara and I were talking about how there's a lot of parallels between the three Archeron sisters and the and the fates and how, you know, you have Elaine being the seer, but the mom said a bunch of stuff that was very seer-like as well, calling Nesta her cunning queen. And, um, and it's almost like, okay, if there was like a little bit of that in their bloodline already, like, could it turn out that Nesta ends up being like a high queen or something to that effect yes. too? Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, yeah. I mean, there are some seeds there. It's not out of the realm of possibility. But that was like where I was getting my like high queen, like Nesta was the one supposed to be that. Wasn't supposed to be Reese. They were all coming to Nesta. And even she calls them yeah. in a later scene, like they came to Nesta. So what's interesting with that is I feel like, I feel like because her mom shaped her that way is why Nesta has those queenly like attributes and why she has those things and so I think Mm -hmm. with her deciding to kind of give up her power at the end of the book and like her choosing Cassian over Lanthus and stuff is almost her being like I don't have to be what my mom picked I think it's almost more powerful for Nessa to just be the Valkyrie leader and Cassian's mate and like to be a weapon in Feyre's arsenal and let Feyre be the queen Mm -hmm. because it's almost like her being like I'm choosing my own path and I don't have to just, I don't have to be a queen just because my mom wanted me to marry a prince kind of a thing. So mm-hmm. I almost hope that Nessa never becomes a high queen or a queen of any kind because it almost feels mm-hmm. like better for it's her. Forced. Yeah. I feel you there. Um, yeah. So I did enjoy the scene where they escape the prison too. <laughs> and like everything's now afraid of her. Like all the beings in the prison are like, oh shit. Like she they just fucking killed Lanthus. <laughs> Lanthus's death you know and then like everybody's like telling Cassian to sit down or whatever and he's like no like like he's raring to go still and she, like I forgot who said it but they're like your skull is cracked and your arm is broke sit the fuck down dude yeah I I enjoyed that because he's like no like she shouldn't have had to save me I was supposed to save her mm-hmm but also, like, because at this point, we did not know officially that they were mates. But Lanthus tried, he's like, you guys smell like, and sure. Cassian's like, shut the hell up, dude. Like, like ah, it's a secret. Ixnay like, on the mate A. <laughs> Ate me. Ate like, me. <laughs> like, don't say it. Um, but that cracked me up, too, because I'm like, I know what he was about to say. I know uh-huh. it. We all did. <laughs> 
Cassie and, and Nesta took- was like more obvious than Feyre and Resand were. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, and then she took him back to her house, like her old house. Yes. And like showed him like, and she was like so beside herself at the squalor basically that they lived in. And she was so embarrassed by it. And I've had that exact feeling. I'm like, no, I don't want to mm-hmm. like, you can't come to my house because like, like Sandra knows this, but you can't take a shower at my house. You can't flush the toilet, not my house currently, but as a kid. Growing um, up, yeah. You can't flush the toilets at my house. And like, it was super embarrassing. And so, like, her showing him that, that was her, like, I think, real first step at vulnerability with it. Well, I guess second, because she broke the hell down. But I don't think she meant to do that. Like, that was not a choice that she made to be vulnerable with him in that moment. But this was her first choice to be vulnerable and to let him reject her Mm -hmm. and to see if he would reject her because of it. And so, like, I found that very, very sweet. And, like, her, like, that was her acceptance of him, too, I think. It took her a little bit longer to fully accept everything. But I think that that was her, like, accepting him and the mate bond. On the, on the topic of accepting the bond when they, you know, get Rezan to agree to throw together their bond party or whatever you want to call <laughs> yeah, it. The like, the, the ceremony. Book. And it's ceremony. just lavish. Uh-huh. <laughs> That, yeah i, I love i loved that i loved how nesta was like then he, if you don't want that then here's a biscuit here's a stale biscuit and Cassie <laughs> was like those are my choices <laughs> i either accept this lavish shit or i get a stale biscuit so thank you their relationship <laughs> is so real i just love it nesta's like you're gonna do what i want you to do and i'm gonna let you think you have a choice but I learned from Ray Sand. You don't really have a choice. And we find out what Cassian gave Nesta for the Winter Solstice present last year, too. I can't remember if he, like, told her or if it was him, no, like, having talking, a memory of it. Like, internal dialogue of, like, I'm so glad I went through so much time and effort to get this damn book. And it was a thoughtful yeah. present, too. Like, the little mm-hmm. Faye made, you know, first publication book thing. Like, really? You're just going to toss that in the Sidra? I'm so mad. <laughs> I'm so, so mad. I know. It's like, the one time Cassian did something that I, like, I was like, I don't know that if we were together, we could come back from this. Like, you destroyed a book. Mm-mm-mm. Like. <laughs> a historical text, basically. Yeah. Yeah. Like, a priceless. And... Yeah. So... I want to talk about it. Speaking of the solstice, like. I really enjoyed the Eris and Nesta like dance scene. Oh and, my like, gosh. Like how yes. affected Cassian was. And then like then he even broke in. He's like, I can't do this anymore. Like, no. And Rhysand's just like, was... what the fuck? Why are you cutting in? You know that then, we have a plan. And, and Eris then, is like, I want to marry her. What do you want? I, I love that. I even sent like Sandra, I think I sent Sandra a text that like that was Pharaoh's comment about sh- he danced with their three fucking dances. Yeah. That was that was as far as Cassian could last. He lasted three dances, not yeah. even three full dances, and he cut yeah. in. Well, well, and Eris was, like, proposing marriage after three dances. Yeah. And she's like, he danced with her three times, and it's, like, proposing marriage. And she's like, I guess it was a potent dance. Another supporting reason why I think Eris and Moore are mates is Eris wanted to marry Nesta even though he knew she wasn't his mate and I think it's because he knew who his mate was already and knew he wasn't gonna end up with her so he was like I'm I'm gonna marry for power yeah oh yep Mm -hmm. and then just just saying after that they had like the the soul connecting smut scene uh yeah (laughs) but before that um, before that scene okay they have the presence and can we just talk about how amazingly sweet it was that Asriel bought her a book light and like, yes, she hugged him and it was like, everyone in the room was like, what is happening? And she, <laughs> checked, with, like, she checked in with him at the beginning of the party yes. too, you know, I'm just like, thank you. Somebody's paying attention to this brooding shadow boy over here, just hanging out on the wall. Um... Speaking of that, though, he didn't. He said he didn't want to be near the flames, and Nesta was like, "But she could tell who he really didn't want to be near." Was it more? Was Elaine? Was it Elaine? It was Elaine. I thought, yeah, Elaine was by the fire, or was it Lucia? I, don't know. I, 
I've like I've gone back and like tried to figure it out and I could never figure out who it was that Asriel didn't want to be near. I had the strong sense that it was Elaine because okay. like it was mentioned that Elaine was by the fire and she even looks at Elaine right after that. Okay. I'll have to go back and see. We can check that out. But yeah. I don't know. I'm down for this idea of the shadows, you know, gravitating to Gwen, but like as like that pure boy part of him, like still wanting Elaine. We shall see. We shall see. Mm -hmm. And then I like that um, after their soul connecting. Yeah. um, Cassian ditches them for five days. Cassian like built the obstacle course, which turns out to be like how you get into the blood right is passing this obstacle course. American Ninja Warrior. Speed walk. Skip. Yes. I love that. Like they're like, okay, you guys are ready. Well, they... They say that they're they, ready because they cut the ribbon. Yeah, like, they all there's cut the ribbon. There's a scene, and that's where, like, this, I mean, this quote is in the book m- many times, but that's where, like, the next quote that I have is. Um, and this is the other one that I have for my wall. Once my husband finishes writing or reading it, I'm going to put both of them up in my office. But Gwyn whispered, I am the rock against which the surf crashes. Nesta straightened at the words as if they were a prayer and a summons. Gwyn lifted the blade nothing can break me it's like mm. okay did you like the serial yeah. quote of the like only you get to decide what breaks you because yeah. i loved that quote too it's a really good quote it like that is probably my favorite from the first three because a lot of people like to the stars who listen uh-huh. in the dreams that are answered and a lot of people like don't let the hard days win which and, and they're they're both very good quotes but they kind of pale in comparison to the silver flames quotes for me, but leave mm-hmm. this world better than you found it is like a really powerful, mm-hmm. just standalone like mantra mm-hmm. for anyone trying to like make a difference. So it's, it's different than the trauma quotes, but it's, it's good. If that makes mm-hmm. sense. Another scene that gets me for Cassian is when she finds out that they are, in fact, mates, which I think she knew the whole time. But when when, when he, it is told to her, yeah, when she like, makes like, a bargain, like she calls in her like, she's her, like, it's fine for Fair and Rhysand because they're mates. And Cassian's like, what do you think we are? Yeah. <laughs> but she calls in the like the, the bargain, the thing that he owed and makes it like the bargain and like makes him go away. Yeah. But he was also like, like oh. you need to be smarter about how you say things because I can just come back and get you to talk to me. <laughs> and it's like, you also need to be smarter about how you say things, Cassian, because the reason she called in the bargain is because you called yourself shackled to her, which is offensive for any yes. girl. Like, yes. Like, I know, oh. we all know, even Nesta knew that he didn't mean it like that. But like, yeah. it's still, words, it's still harsh. words have power. Yeah, it was still I a little mean, harsh. talking about words having power, what did you think of the phase and death bargain, the Romeo and Juliet style thing? I feel I like mean, they I were so... why they did that after the war. Like, they didn't want to live without each other. But dear Lord, you did not think ahead. Yeah. Like, at all. <laughs> like, it was... what if you have kids later on? Like, yeah. what if, like, she was able to birth these kids with no problems... And you're both just going to die and leave your kid orphaned? The real thing for me, like, and this is going to sound a little harsh. It's romantic for a couple, but it's really dumb for leaders. Mm -hmm. Like, if they didn't have kids, then they were leaving the night court exposed by doing that. And that is really where that, like, and Amron even calls that out. Like, she's like, you guys are stupid. Like, what? (laughs) I love Amron. Like, who I, does that? Yeah. Like, I'm sorry, but Resand was painted as this like really good leader, and he mm-hmm. keeps making these decisions that a, a good leader wouldn't make. He sacri- he doesn't like, want to be a leader. Mm-hmm. Like, I think that's the key part. He doesn't want to. Like, once he has his family, he's like, eh. The, that's the thing though, is that was part one of the things that Pharaoh loved about him. Tamlin didn't want to be a leader, and so he shirked his responsibilities. Resand didn't want to be a leader and yet he still stepped up and he like made a plan and took care but, of these people. And now he's not doing that. And he's like sacrificing his people for Feyre. And that's not something you want in your high Lord or your high King 
or whatever. So as great no. as Resand was, he is not he's not doing it right. But he's that morally gray character that will give up the world for his woman. Like I don't before care. he didn't have her. I think like, that's how so the he villain choose to be a leader, right? <laughs> he he didn't have anything else to lose, right? Um, or to gain. Like, but now that he has her, he is he is all about her and his leadership isn't his don't top like priority that. anymore. I don't think that's a good thing. Well, I don't think it's a good thing either. I'm just saying from his perspective, like she is his number one. Yeah. And if she, she was goes, also Tamlin's he's like number not one, be worth shit. Anyway, she was also Tamlin's number one. And that didn't work out. Well, well, Tamlin is a completely different person. Like yeah. he already shirked his, his responsibilities before she even came along. Yeah. Speaking of Tam Tam, so it was kind of close. I just kind of summarized all of the votes across social media platforms, but it, it did like go. People are wanting a redemption arc for Tamlin. So we'll see, like TBD there. I think Jesse has something with the whole Briar and the happen. scene. Mm-hmm. I'm thinking because I, I think he needs a human mate. I think that a human mate is exactly what he needs in his life. And I could see it being Briar. Because she's already been brought in, he has ties to the Winter Court because they talk about how like the the weather courts are similar, the way the solar Sorry. courts are all uh-huh. usually aligned. Um, if it's not Briar, it would be interesting for her to bring back the mercenary from book one. Oh, I I agree with you that he yeah. needs like a human because yeah. I think he is going to fully give up his his court. Yeah. And I think Lucian is not going to be the day court person. I don't think Helian's going to die anytime soon cuz like why would you kill him? Um <laughs> I hope so. Okay. Do you know something Tara. I don't? No, but um there are fan I, theories that Helian's going to die and that's how Lucian's going to find out he's his father, but I don't like to think, think about Lucian's it cuz that would make me so sad. Talent. It would be interesting cuz Elaine because does it, show it signs has... of being high lady of spring. I mean, it has if, been mentioned that it doesn't have to go to a familial connection. It, it does, can go it has to said that. anybody. And so I think Lucian's going to be the spring court. He already has connections in the spring court. I think he's going to go back to the spring court, not the day court. I think Helian mm-hmm. dies. I think Lucian becomes day court. I think Don't Tam does. Man. I know. I think Tam does end up with Briar and that. Tamlin has learned his lesson with Feyre and gives power to to Briar. Boo, you to- whore. Boo, you whore. I like how I tried to softly be like, there are fan theories that maybe he <laughs> dies. And Santa's like, I think he dies. He dies. I know you love him. <laughs> Poor I know Tara. you love that swaggering male. <laughs> yes, I do. Boo. But, I mean, I guess, like, most of the people I really like end up dead, right? So, hmm. no. Sarah J. Mass hates me. <laughs> she hates me too Personally, she sinks all she of my ships me. so um <laughs> but then so the girls end up in the right like as sandra admitted or alluded to and uh, they kick ass yeah all okay but before okay, we get the to the right bracelet. yeah, well, yeah. But, and before the friendship bracelet like how powerful is it that gwen left the library for nesta and she even said she can't go back she even says that once they leave the library, they they can't go back anymore. They only leave when they're ready to go out into the world. So, like, Gwen gave up her home to be there for Nesta. I and but just over that part. after that she she was she was thinking about going back to the library after. Yeah, but I don't think she does rights. because I like she talks about the fact that like they as soon as they leave they can't come back. So. I think she would have to like fully commit to going back. And I don't think she's going to do that. I think she, I think she's either going to live in the house of wind with Nesta or she's going to go be with uh, Emery up in Windhaven while Emery continues her like shop or something of the, along those lines. But I think that was huge and, and super powerful. So I agree with that. I um oh the part where Gwen's helping write the book and she's writing them into the new age of the Valkyries. I just yes, love, I love it. it so much. Yes, yeah. So so Gwen leaves to do to to join Nesta, and then yeah, they get snatched out of their bed, out of their beds, in Emery's little shop, and no one remembered that it was the night before the blood right. 
<laughs> so Cassian is like, I just got to get her to talk to me. And then, you know, and so he shows up there and then he goes into a blind panic. And Reese Sand is even like, bro, even though I can't interfere, they have to compete now. Which like, what a horrible. I know. Like, because the laws are if you interfere, you die and they die. So he's mm-hmm. like, hell no, can't do that. And it's some weird thing where the night mm-hmm. of this, like there's no magic. It's all nullified for this entire week or however long it is. They're supposed to be dropped. They're not, it's supposed to have weapons. Yep. But Brie Allen, like. Brie Allen did mess she's with been the magic. People mm-hmm. to bring weapons in. Yeah. And they- we find out that it was actually Emery's cousin that does it. He got he got enthralled by the crown and Brie mm-hmm. Allen before he even came back. But so, I think he I think he also is just that kind of a person. Because I mean, yeah. it doesn't seem like that was much of a shift in his character. <laughs> it wasn't something at least that she to had Emory. to make him do. Um, so I don't know that he wouldn't have done that already. I agree. So I, it had been so long since I read the whole the book, right? And so mm-hmm. I, I started crying whenever the two like Emery and Gwen made it to the top right and so they like Mm -hmm. flashed out and so Nesta's there holding the line against Bellius and the remaining Illyrians and then there was a scene where she was struggling and it looked like Bellius was about to kill her and then like Cassian comes in and just like kills him I remember like crying in relief because and then you realize that Cassian isn't himself I was like no it's like my heart was ripped out all over again and he just, was like, I need you to kill me because I can't control my actions. And then he tries to kill himself. Mm-hmm. Uh, yeah. yeah. And then Nesta loses it and turns the bitch to dust. Like she unmakes her. <laughs> Ding dong. <laughs> Brianna's dead. <laughs> mm-hmm. It was amazing. And then we get to another scene that was yeah. amazing. Well, because she like, takes her like, out. And they immediately find out that Feyre's, like, gone into... Li- it's premature labor, isn't it? Mm-hmm. And they say it's premature. She's probably yeah, stressed out by all these fucking people. The yeah. baby's dying, yeah. too, because, like, there's no way it can survive that early outside of her. Oh, wow. And I then like- little Miss Nesta, who cares about nobody in everybody else's eyes, is yeah. like, I'll give anything. And Help she- me figure out how to save her. I will give anything. I will she- give you it all back. She uses the entire dread trove and like covers Pharaoh with her body and like starts sobbing. And like, I think Cassian and Asriel are holding Reese at bay, and Mora's holding a screaming, crying, or not a screaming, the crying, a, a, a sad, like pitiful baby that isn't, isn't screaming and crying or anything. Yeah. And like, look at this heartbreaking scene. Somebody, somebody drew it. There's a there's a fan art on Instagram somewhere of all of them like Cassian and Asriel holding Resand, all of them sobbing and like Morgan clutching the the baby crying and like Nesta over top of Feyre and it's like so heartbreaking and sad and then you just hear Nesta like saying I love you Feyre I'm sorry I love you I love you and then like the mother comes and she like channels and and Nesta gives all of her power up except for a tiny sliver and I can't decide if it's a tiny sliver of power or if it was Nesta that like Nesta was sacrificing her life and the mother was like no you get to keep your life well no Mm. she got a little power still okay um because I think she also like I think it was a kind of both but I think the mother's like no you get to keep a little bit of what makes you special (laughs) Mm -hmm. too there's so much mystique about this mother entity. This was such a great scene. It was powerful. It was cinematic. Like you could picture it vividly in your head. All of this tragic stuff is happening. And Nesta never again just bystands and watches it go down, runs never out of the room, again. grabs all the dread trove items. And like she's wearing the crown and the mask and she has the harp and she like plays that final string and like everything freezes. And it's her like moving through time. It was just so cool. And I was, it reminded me, I like, I'm trying not to do like Throne of Glass spoilers here because like there's a scene where like a drop of power remains in in, like one of the characters. It was very much parallel to that with this. So Mm -hmm. it's like, there's still enough where you're like, okay, Nesta still has power, but like how much? She just has so much. 
I think she can still control the dread trove because like she well, still they, took it away yeah. from her. Yeah. Then it then it all um, falls. Like she drops the crown and the mask comes off and she drops the harp and she's just like clinging to Feyre and Feyre like times restarts and Feyre like wakes up and she's healed and she says I love you too and they like embrace and then Moore's like sobbing because the baby starts crying and then like Rhysand just like sags in relief and like you can feel that like joy you and know and Sand after is just like on his knees just like you know so praising Nesta, Nesta like so grateful like giving her mm-hmm. anything and everything i think this is where the mating bond ceremony uh-huh. like mm-hmm. lavishness yes. comes from because afterwards yeah. she like tells cassian she's like do you want to have an elaborate ceremony and he's like i'll never hear the end of it and she's like fine here's a steel biscuit well and he he does that because like she she's like you've got to stop giving me shit like because yeah. he kept doing it and so <laughs> she like basically said okay i'll have this elaborate like mating ceremony so that like she can be like this will make you even with me yeah (laughs) this will be it yeah and then the scene where they all visit the dad's grave yeah and she shows him like the baby and then nesta gets her time and she's like i'm sorry and she Mm -hmm. leaves the little wooden figurine she took from Mm -hmm. the cabin and it's like really beautiful closure for nesta to kind of Mm -hmm. be like i'm at peace i have i have inner peace yes with who i am and what i've done kind of a thing and she gets to see because Gwen and Emery are at Feyre's house afterwards, right? And they're telling her about what happened with the blood right and everything. So, like, they're in the town. So, yeah, Gwen's not back at the library at least yet. So, it's like such good growth for Gwen good- and all of them. Yeah, it was like coming full circle, right? With the sisters finally doing this one thing together. And bringing baby Nyx. Her computer died. Oh no. (laughs) So at the grave, Feyre had brought baby Nyx. And so maybe that's like the bonus chapter two, because they were talking about baby names, right, Jesse? Yeah, I think so. In the the Barnes & Noble edition that I have here, there's a face and chapter um, where they talk about, that's the Crescent City Hold on. they're kind of reflecting on winter solstice like how it went <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and how elaine had some bite in her and uh-huh. like it went better than they expected for nesta and um they had to talk about telling more they because they got oh, yeah. to tell everyone but more all at the same time and then they talk about baby names and oh she's like what about your or she's like your family name and he's like let's not talk about my family name and what's your theory there everyone says that his family name is darling and i'm fine with it (laughs) i'm fine with it too simply because i remember very clearly in book one amarantha called him rizan darling um i think it was like that and like comma placement stuff but i don't know if like the comma placement stuff is just like a grammatical choice or you know Interesting. what I mean? Yeah. I, it's been so long since I read the first one. I didn't like the first one. I always skip it when I do rereads. So I'm going to have to go back and, and see, but I think it's fun because he constantly calls Feyre, Feyre darling. And it's like foreshadowing to the fact that he, he was like, I want to marry this one. <laughs> so, I love that theory. Yeah. Um, I was otherwise, not allowed to like look at other people's theories because it gave away stuff. So yeah. Otherwise, there's a different theory I have that we can't talk about. Why? <clears throat> Big, um, we'll just, talk about it later. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we'll talk about it again. Don't worry about it. Let it. Tear. That's just, just me. frowning. <laughs> there's a there's a song that I'm going to quote for you, and it's "Don't ask me no questions, and I won't tell you no lies." Why does Sandra get to know and I don't? Because I've read, like, <laughs> everything. So is yeah. it a, a Crescent City, like, no. spoiler, possibly? Not no. really. It's it's stuff that we'll talk about after you read Crescent City because I don't know how to really explain it to you without spoiling more things. So. I'm just hiding my face. Um, Yeah. You'll get there, Tara, very soon. 
You'll like it, I promise. But I do like the the, the Feyre Darling and Resand Darling and the fact that Am- Amarantha had used it too. It, I, I, yeah, it makes sense if it's the case. The first time I read it, I was like, I remember Thor- Throne of Glass and like how much humor there was between Elite and Lorcan with his alliteration with his name. So at first I was like, maybe it's something stupid with that. Like it's something just that rolls off the tongue really dumb. But I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. It could be like beach. Resand beach. <laughs> My husband was like, his last name is Knight because he's the High Lord of the Knight Court. And I was like, I don't know that that's how that works because Lucian's Ooh. last name is in Autumn. But it could be Castle. Resand Castle. Resand Castle. That'd be cool. Have you seen this like show, the Castle, High Lord? Tara? Yeah. Maybe it's, maybe it's Resand Morningstar. <laughs> okay, and that was, that was Sandra's plug for Lucifer <laughs> in this one, guys. <laughs> Good job. Oh, maybe it's Resand Night Star. Hmm? I do think it's interesting that for Nyx they picked the Queen of Night or whatever. What was the meaning of the name? Is that it? It was um, a goddess. A, yeah, a goddess of the night. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting. Which, like, that reminded me of like the like. Isn't there a river in like Greek mythology named Nyx? I don't know. Or like there's yeah. some sort of god or something. Nyx is a part of mythology somewhere. I know it is. I we'll can't to remember what, but. I feel like everyone has access to like figure out how all of this story goes with all of the mythology and stuff being woven in. But it's like, we'll just wait until SGM writes it. <laughs> yes. Yes. How she puts her little spin on it. So. What's up? Any any other favorite quotes or parts that we wanted to talk about with not just, you know, a cord of silver flames, but any of it since we're at the last book for now? No, I just like Nesta a lot. Like Nesta's my favorite sister. I yeah. always say that until, you know, something happens. I'm ready for like a, a lane freak show thing to happen. No, no, I've been a Nesta <laughs> follower the whole time. What, Here's what's my okay. thing. Whatever, Tara. A Nesta Nestor. <laughs> okay. I'm, I'm creating a fan group for Nesta. Here's my thing. I saying I don't like them is too strong, but I wasn't a face and person. Reese didn't do it for me. I was annoyed. I was like, I can't believe Feyre ditched Tamlin for Reese and so quick. And my friend was like, you just got to keep reading. She explains it in chapter 54. And I did like read it. And I was like, fine. Like it's, it's okay, fine. I'll accept them as a couple. But the only reason I started reading the series again is because I found out Nesta and Cassian were the main characters of the like of yeah. this book. So I was like, fine. I guess I'll read about Farah and Resand so that I can get to Nesta's story because Nesta's all I really care about. She was the most interesting character from the get go, and I stand by it. <laughs> I like that you're a Nestor too. I'm 100% Nessian all the way, not just because they remind me of Hercules and Meg, but just like, I don't know, Feyre and Resand seemed too, like, perfect to... It was so convenient, like, everything that he explained, right? Yeah. And Have you seen the fan theories about Resand being, like, a, a villain, basically? Like, no. because he's told Feyre that... His de- demoti powers, he can make her think anything and believe anything, and she would never know it. And so there's this line of the fandom that is still with this notion that he's this big bad guy that has somehow like made everyone believe and twist it. Which oh. my first time reading it, I had this hard time liking him because of everything he put Favor through unnecessarily in the first book. Like, yeah, he could have just saved her life. He didn't have to twist her arm that was broken to he make didn't her have strike to a paint bargain. her and dress her up and make her dance he didn't and do all of to. that weird stuff. And that was my thing. Like, I understand, like, hating Tamlin and wanting to hurt Tamlin, but using Favor to do it didn't feel right to me. And yeah, I haven't heard any evil Resand theories. I have heard evil Elaine theories. And mm-hmm. I am not 100% sure that I'm behind those ones, but I don't know. I just think that it was too cleaned up and too perfect. And like even Feyre comes across as a little bit too like self-sacrificing. And of course, like, are, are we really going to believe that this like 20-year-old girl actually like, 
is so much smarter than this 500-year-old High Lord. Like, it's weird that Resand didn't think to, like, reveal Valaris until now. Like, is was he really protecting all of those people from, from like, being detected? And, like, how is it different now? Like, it doesn't feel like anyone has, anyone cares that the city exists. So it's, like, he clearly didn't actually have to be this villain for 500 years before he revealed Valaris. And it's just, like, I don't know. Yeah. It's a little bit weird. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I definitely see where everything was too bowed up and convenient. Whereas, like, so. with Cassian, even, like, Cassian also kind of comes across as a little bit too good to be true. But they show him and his weaknesses, like, the fact that he cannot deceive to save his life and stuff. And it almost makes him come across as dumb, even though, like, we have clear definitions that he's, like, not dumb and is actually very thoughtful. So it makes him more complex. And Nessa herself being this, like, hardened person makes her more complex. And so their story is more interesting because they're more interesting. So They're just more they're, flawed. Yeah, just, yeah, totally. Which is a little bit of my, like, that's why, that's why I like Angel more than I like other characters in Here the Buffyverse. So <laughs> it's just, like, it kind of shows that, I think. So it it relates. Yeah. Any any other final words or thoughts on the book or series? Thanks for Good. thanks for inviting me to come talk about it. Jesse, <laughs> this was so chaotic and fun. Like it's, it's like it's like all of this is building up and you just want to talk about everything by the time you get to the end. And like this book was so therapeutic in a way because I don't know, you got to feel everything. You got to feel the frustrations, you got to feel the hardships, you got to sob like I love when I can re like cry on a second, third, fourth read through of a book. Yeah. It's just, I love it so much. So thank you for joining us, Jesse. Huh. Um, y'all, Jesse is a host on the gym was canceled Buffy podcast. So if you are a Buffy angel fan, definitely check out their podcast. Her and Stash are awesome. And on Instagram, where can we find you? You can find me on Instagram. If you want to talk about, sjm or anything other bookish related you can find me at tiaras.and.books um i haven't posted in a while but i'm still active on there i share things on my stories a lot and stuff so yeah yeah thank you so much for joining us today we'll have to do another episode and talk yes. more about stuff once we finish present city or something sarah yeah. mm -hmm. and when you Just guys ever I do really your... need to know this spoiler <laughs> that i can't know <laughs> And whenever we, whenever, whenever Sandra gets caught up on Lucifer, we can all do an episode on Lucifer. Yes, yeah, Sandra. <laughs> There's not real. enough time. There's so many things I need to catch up hey, on. I read oh. like eight books and now five <laughs> books and coming up on two for you. you this is true. You can watch okay, five fine. seasons. And it's, it's made. It's complete, so there's not going to be, like, more coming out. And some of the seasons are pretty short. I was looking at it, and, like, only one season has 22 episodes. So mm -hmm. so a lot the last shorter. last seasons are only, like, eight episodes or 14 mm -hmm. or something like oh, that. Oh, damn. Yeah. yeah. They're short. Okay. No, I can do that. I will. So keep an eye out for that, y'all. So thanks for joining us. We hope you enjoyed the dis discussion of everything Silver Flames. And we will see you in the near future for some extra bonus episodes. So thank you. Bye. Bye.